a lot of times you have to kind of throw the video out because it just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, so how's everybody doing? So what I want to do is preface this particular uh, tutorial type uh, episode with a couple of things, okay? So for those of you that are new to the channel, if you go to videos or um, popular, like there's tabs on the main page, and so the most popular video is called The Signature Scene, The River Final, and it's vlog number 66. And I explain quite comprehensively with full painting and everything on how I did this this water surface but there's a lot in that episode but you don't have to use that method to do this to achieve this and I want to show you um, some sort of um, advanced texturing techniques but I want to show you that this is really just a basic safe way of doing water it like it really is I mean you can choose at the end of the day the method you want to use but um, I want to show you this method because it has a lot of advantages uh, using water-based acrylics and you can do it on your own time and walk away and 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 like come back and forth and not worry about um, you know things going haywire on you okay so uh, if you go to this particular episode right here okay vlog number 66 I explain how I did all this water now bef before um, I jump into the you know the tutorial on this section right here if you're doing this for the first time, you can do this on any wood flat surface, provided you seal it. Like it's very important that you seal it. I used quarter inch plywood here because there's stringers underneath it. You know, it's a really solid structure. I sealed it with, with varathane. You can use polyurethane, varathane, any sort of waterborne that, that gets it nice and smooth, okay? And if you're in doubt or you're not sure, don't have the confidence to paint this, just paint it olive green. And I'll tell you why. If you look at any water surface, any water surface in the shade, like under my hand here, it looks olive. Almost any water does that, okay? So if you want to be safe, like there's going to be different lighting, you're going to be viewing it at different angles, um, olive is a good safe default color to base out with. And all I did here was add a bit of tan or lighter green, and I blended the edge a bit. So that's just a flat paint, right? That's all that is, okay? Uh, because you're going to see me using these products once in a while. So hashtag no sponsor. I'm not sponsored by Golden or Liquitex. I just love their products because they're professional and I'm an artist and I use artist products. So when you see me using regular gel gloss, this is a, 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 a very heavy kind of gel, okay? If you want to retain tool marks like heavy chop and so on, then you're probably going to use this to stipple on. But you can put this over top of GAC 500 or vice versa. It doesn't matter. There's probably 20 different uh, viscosities of this gel. That's minimum, though. There's probably more. And all it means is, is that they have different qualities in how they retain tool marks, like brush marks, you know, spatula knife marks, whatever you use, right? And I find the GAC 500 is a great, you know, finishing. It's not a varnish, but it... But it, but it goes on and it almost self-levels. You can stipple tool marks into it, but they'll, it'll level out a little bit if you want that look, right? Like initially I put quite an aggressive kind of chop on here. So if, so if you want to soften it, you can put another layer on and it'll soften that chop down a bit. So it doesn't matter. You can lay like a hundred layers of this stuff over and over again on top of each other. Even after you've painted, like I could paint this a totally different color right now and then redo the same process and it would look like this but a different color so it's really versatile that way and very forgiving okay and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera down now I'm going to shoot from this angle I'm going to show you how I create these sort of low tide kind of surf rolling in on the beach and the reason why I use acrylic is because you can model a very tight low angle uh, uh, shoreline to water without any creep right it just transitions beautifully and you can create a lot of subtle effects and that's all it takes really to get a nice water texture and it's achievable quite easily by using acrylic gels as I'm going to demonstrate okay
I just want to say that when it comes to paintbrushes, it's personal preference for everybody, but uh, these are a couple that I like for stippling. This is a 3 8 Deerfoot. This one here, you can see the end of it. It's flat. Thus, Deerfoot. And then this is really good for large areas for doing water for ripple. It's a one inch black mop. And I'll show you how that works if you're doing a large area and you just want to blow through it quick. Um, mind you, this is just one of the many products uh, that I like to use. Uh, I like to put this on after the main textures already done it just puts an extra little bit of a sheen like I want to control the sheen I don't just want to pour one substance and then just have it be super high gloss like I might not like it and uh, when I'm doing uh, with acrylics um, I can control the layers and then I can look at it the next day and say well I don't really like that it's just too clear you know for my liking um, so that's why I do it, because you're in control. And like, once again, I don't want to lament about resin, because I think resin has a place, or like epoxy resin, and I understand people use it to good effect. But I like to be in control, and I was never felt in control when I used that many decades ago. I just didn't like it. First and foremost, I didn't like it when I found a big puddle on my shop floor that ruined my shop floor. But uh, I didn't like it because uh, for that, and because of the creep, as I mentioned, and... Um, the high gloss, I didn't like the high gloss. It was just too much for me. I just found that scale water doesn't look like that, unless it's an ideal situation. But then it depends how you view the layout too. Like with on social media, you can convey any surface more beautiful than it actually is, depending on the lights and the camera. But generally when I look at this layout, the water just looks great from every angle. So you can see that the mop, you know, has a nice stippling effect. Of course, you, um, you'll see its full effect once it's dry. And I like to do small sections of it because then I can correct, right? Uh, if there's something that I don't like about it, I can build up another layer. Like what if I say, ah, oh, the chop's too fine? Well, then I can come in with the gel and basically put on another layer. So you're only building up very thin layers. So you can gradually build up the effect that you want over time and you just throw your brush into a jar of water like it's and off you go for dinner or out with your friend you know whatever right just do a little bit walk away leave it like you're not you know what i mean like this isn't going anywhere okay in fact uh, if you want it to go somewhere you can come in with a brush like this and now uh, you can play around with it for a while and the more you play around with it as it starts to kick it starts to create a little bit of froth in the area that you're actually stippling, which I think looks really good in HO and O scale for a type of, you know, that the kind of low kind of sort of waves, like like tidal kind of waves. Anyway, and then if I don't like this, if this shows up um, where I don't like it, I can lay on another coat, okay? and fix it easy easy fix right okay and uh and then if once this clears uh you might say oh it could you know because it will it'll clear crystal clear like a lot of people get scared of this because they go oh no i ruined my water no 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 have faith it'll dry and it'll dry crystal clear and tack free eventually okay now if you want to add this like keep this sort of wave froth rolling in, then you can come in later with some really diluted white paint and just stipple it nicely with a brush and then put another coat of GAC 500 over top and it'll just render it sort of transparent and uh, with a luminosity that really reflects, you know, sculpted water, right? And once again, if you want to put this over top of two-part epoxy resin, then you can, right? Provided it's cured, okay? So that looks pretty good for now. So just going to leave that and then work on something else. Maybe just tweak this shoreline a little bit. But you'll find that it's quite relaxing and uh, gives you a sense of control, right? There's no panic. There's no, 
I mean, this doesn't cure super fast, but it'll be clear tomorrow morning. So you might want to consider doing something like this at night before you bed down or before you call it a day because uh, you'll be quite pleased the next morning. Um, without any disasters, okay? So this is glass bead gel by Golden. It's a clear acrylic gel with small glass beads in it. And I like to use it for doing uh, froth and ripples, uh, like just small tidal waves sort of rolling in on a shallow beach. I'll just show you a quick photo of one. Okay, and uh, I just make sure my, my brush is wet and I just stab it in. I just push it from behind so it creates a little bit of a lip and then I feather it out a bit. Now, if when this cures, it'll be completely clear, transparent. There'll be little bubbles that are created from the glass beads. And then when you want to feather it out, when it's dry, you just lay in a small film or just paint over a little bit of GAC 500 over top of this and it'll just transition and smooth it out beautifully, just like water. It's all about thin layers with acrylic gels and so on. It's the same way you treat them like paints and the same way you do thin paint. You build up the layers. That's like, it's all about that. Like if you ask, ask any artist that's a professional and they'll tell you that the success of any painting or the creation of a painting is all built up layers. Like it, you know, you don't stab in one layer in one color and call it done. It just doesn't work that way. So you just be patient. And the beauty of acrylics is it doesn't smell it. You just throw the brush into the jar and walk away and then come back and then come back and work on it some more. That's the beauty of it. Like, like I can walk away right now and it's like, and then not worry. Like I got to run to work. I got to do whatever. Off I go, I come back and I just add to this. And then I look at it, you know, the next day or half a day when that clears, it takes about four hours to clear or so. And then I can feather it out with some other um, gel. Like there's this as well too, right? For sculpting, soft gel gloss, hashtag no sponsor, by the way, I'm not sponsored by Golden. I'll just say that right now. Uh, there's soft body gel, there's hard body, there's medium, like there's a whole rack of this stuff. And when you get into it, the sky is the limit, <laughs> or in this case, the water. Um, you know, you can do anything with it. Any kind of water feature, rough, fast, slow, clear, ripple, 15 
not chop, whatever you want to do, you can get into it and you don't have to worry about making mistakes if you do thin layers because you're just building it up slow, right? And it's acrylic. And when this hardens, like this is a couple of years old now, and I'm going to recover this with a thin layer just to finish it off like a, a, a sealer glaze, like varnish almost, acrylic. And this is just hard as rock. And acrylics like that. It, it, it actually dries fast, but it takes, like oil, uh, takes years to cure, really cure. And when it does, my goodness, it's, it's even more resistant to scratches than uh, two-part epoxy, this golden like acrylic. Okay.